Today we're talking bass headphone amplifiers. These cool little pieces of kit, they'll basically allow you to plug your headphones into your bass guitar, allowing you to play your bass at any time of day or night without pissing off the new neighbors or other members of your family. Uh, there's a variety of different ones available these days on the market, so I decided to buy all the ones I could find for the bass on Amazon and put them through to a series of tests to find out which one is the best. I've clocked up probably around 50 hours of combined testing of these three. Uh, you know, I don't wanna just unbox it, give it a quick test. I've put them through all the paces of all the various different settings and things. So in this video, I'm gonna go through a variety of different categories, give them a point score. At the end of the video, we'll have an overall winner uh, and we'll see which is the best bass headphone amplifier out there at the moment. So the first category, we're talk price, and the clear winner in this category is the Donna Basement, coming in at half the price of the other two. At time of purchase, the Vox and the Black Star cost me $50. Well, in the UK, it was around £35, but $50 they are currently on Amazon.com and the Donna comes in at half that price at $25. So a real bargain basement option of the three and it comes out top in the price category. Bing! Now starting off with probably the most important category we can all agree, it's looks. And the Vox, first of all, looks really cool. From a distance, uh, you know, it's got that and it's got the embossed gold logo, really nice little touch, and the kind of fake amplifier grill on the front, which is a cool little touch. I mean, once you get it in the hand, you'll feel that it's very plasticky. I mean, it's entirely made of plastic apart from the jack, but that doesn't really matter. You know, you're only paying $50 for it. It looks pretty cool uh, when it's plugged into the base from a distance. So if anyone catches you playing it, you're gonna look pretty cool. The Black Star, very similar. Again, they've gone for the kind of miniature amp look. They've got the embossed Black Star logo on there, which is very cool. I mean, I'm scoring it slightly less than the Vox in this category, only because I just think that the gold Vox logo is slightly cooler, but still, despite being made of plastic, you know, it looks pretty good. And finally, the Donna Basement. Being the cheaper of the three options, it looks the cheapest, probably unsurprisingly. It's just got a simple sticker on the front that says basement. It's got some pretty garish blue lights that turn on when you're playing it, which are <laughs> quite offensive. I found uh, actually quite painful to look at when you're trying to adjust the settings on it. Uh, and yeah, just overall, it looks that little bit cheaper which is to be expected because it is cheaper but still looks okay you get what you pay for well you know what they say looks aren't everything but in this contest they are something and for that reason vox comes out on top with the black star just behind donna go have a word with yourself and put on some makeup or something Ooh. now i'll be honest when i first looked into bass headphone amplifiers and I ordered them, I thought you would just get one standard clean tone. That's what you'll get for that sort of price range. That's fine, you know, I just wanna amplify the clean bass sound. But it turns out that all three of these are packed with a variety of different tones, which is pretty cool. The Vox, first of all, it has three channels accessed by pressing the power button, which changes color to indicate the three channel. You've got a low, a medium, and a high gain setting on the Vox. So basically variations on the clean tone. On top of that, you've got a tone dial on top, which uh, you can get a bit more low end, a bit more high end, which is good. I mean, I found myself really just adjusting the tone on the bass itself most of the time, but it's nice to have a little bit more control. The Black Star, on the other hand, has a lot more variety. It's got the three different distinct channels again, but instead of a simple low, medium, and high gain like the Vox, here you've got a classic, a modern, and an overdrive setting, which gives you much more variety in sound than the Vox. The classic being having a little bit of uh, distortion to it, I would say, but being a fairly clean tone, 
and the overdrive being a really fuzzy, heavy distortion that you would expect from kind of or associate with black star amplifiers. On top of that, you've not only got those three tones which are much more distinct than the ones on the Vox, but you've got two different dials on the top to shape that tone even more. You've got a gain to turn up and down the distortion even more, and you've got a tone as well to shape that EQ. So there's a lot more variety to shape your tone with the Black Star than the Vox. I really liked this. I spent hours messing around getting some really nice sounding tones. You know, the ability to go on the cleaner setting, the classic setting, but then crank up a bit more distortion to get a bit more of a crunchy sound. There's a lot more you can do there. With the Donna, you are limited a lot more, again, probably to be expected with a lower price. You've got an FX on and off setting, a simple switch on the side, which will change it from a standard clean tone. We'll put on a sort of phaser, I think they call it the wow setting or something weird like that. Uh, and it just adds this little phaser, which I actually found a bit gimmicky and slightly annoying. So I wouldn't be using that in the long term, I guess. I don't know, they felt like they needed to put something on there to match the other contenders or things on the market, I don't know. Uh, you've got two dials on top, the uh, drive and tone. Uh, again, add a little bit of distortion, change the EQ a little bit. There's a bit of variety there, but not as much tone variety as on the other two. Well, you know what they say, variety is the spice of life and the spiciest of the lives here is the Black Star followed closely behind by the Vox and Donna once again bringing up the rear. Huh. So we talked about variety in the tones. What is the actual sound quality like? And despite having less options on the Vox, the tone quality was fantastic. And maybe that's why they thought, why bother putting loads of different distortions and things on there? We've nailed it with this clean tone. So let's just have slight variations on that and just keep it simple. Uh, and they did really nail it with the clean tone. It sounds amazing. If I was doing like a blind test or something and someone just for some reason handed me a bass and the headphones plugged into this, I would think it was coming from a regular amplifier. It really does sound that good. <laughs> I have used it instead of my normal amp, just practicing, even when I don't need to use uh, headphones, you know, just in the middle of the day when I could use a normal amplifier, I love the tone that much on the Vox in its clean setting that, you know, I would, I would just use it anyway. So really, really nice sound to that. The Black Star, I mean, if it depends what kind of style you want, and if you want that variety of different sounds, then the Black Star is a really nice option. I really loved being able to, you know, just the variety of different sounds you can create and they all sound really good. I mean, the overdrive setting, you think in just a tiny little amplifier, which is a, a preamp, it would sound not great, but it sounds really heavy and distorted. And if you've got a decent pair of headphones, it really is fun to play that really heavy distortion on the overdrive setting with the gain knob cranked up as well. It doesn't sound like it's going to break the headphones or that you're kind of pushing them too far. And as I said in the previous category, just the variety of tones and being able to shape your tone from a kind of clean to adding a bit of crunch. Yeah, it's almost like having a set of pedals with the Black Star, the variety of tones that you can get out of it. So if variety and distortion are something that's important to you, then the Black Star is probably the one over the Vox in this category. And finally, the Donna, I mean, it's, on its clean setting, it's fine. I think of the three, you could really tell that this one was not a real amplifier. As I said, I won't be using the 
gimmicky effects setting and I found that the turning up the drive on it just didn't add a nice distortion. It added a kind of annoying crackly distortion that you might get from like playing music too loudly through a pair of headphones or something. It was just a bit grating. I found it annoying after a while. So if you just want to stick on a clean setting, you're just looking for something cheap to amplify your bass sound ever so slightly, then fine. Fair enough for the for the price you, you do get that and it's it is okay, but it doesn't live up to the variety and the sound quality of the other two contenders. Well, you know what they say, music is life itself. And the Black Star and the Vox seem to have their lives pretty well sorted out. Donna still working on it. Yeah. On both the Vox and the Black Star, you get some rhythm tracks, which I thought was a bit of a gimmick again, but actually I've ended up using that feature quite a lot. I find it a really fun way to just pick up the bass quickly and just jam along. You know, if you don't want to play along to a tab or to a piece of music, you just want to pick up and just have a little jam. On the Vox, you've got three different rhythm track settings. You've got rock slash pop, there's funk slash R&B, and there's other. Uh, these are really nice sounding rhythm tracks. They are proper drums. They sound like recordings of real drums, not just uh, a sound of metronome or kind of fake sounding drums. They sound more like actual drum tracks. And within each of those three categories, you've got three different variations. So that's nine different rhythm tracks to play along to in total. And you can change the tempo of that as well. On the Black Star, you've got slightly less variety. You've got rock, funk, R&B, hip hop, blues, and a metronome on the Black Star, which means that you've got more kind of different types of drum track essentially, but you don't have the different variations within those tracks that you do on the Vox. So yeah, it's kind of, I, I mean, I found there was enough variety on both to find enjoyable tracks to play along to in different types and feels of rhythm. So although you get slightly less on the Black Star, you get kind of more variety. I think they both had enough to keep you interested for a while, no matter what kind of genre you want to play in. And last, again, I, I feel like this is a, a video slagging off the Donna. It's not, I mean, as I said already, you, are going to get less features because you're paying less money. It makes sense. But the Donna doesn't come with those rhythm tracks that the other two do, uh, unfortunately. But all three of them come with a aux in input, which means that you can plug in music from your phone, from your laptop, from anywhere, uh, using a 3.5 millimeter standard cable, and you can play music in through the headphone amplifier, which will come out of your headphones at the same time as the bass which is a really cool feature to have. Obviously, if you're playing bass through headphones, you're gonna to wanna to be quiet. You're not gonna to wanna to be playing music through speakers at the same time, or you know, having one headphone with your phone, uh, one headphone with the bass amplifier, it's not great. So being able to play music through at the same time is great for being able to have a jam and keep that noise level down at the same time. So all three of them have that, even the Donna. So despite not having those rhythm tracks, there are ways you can still jam along with a variety of bits of music. And a bonus point to Donna here as well, woohoo! Uh, it's not all shit. Um, the Donna came with a 3.5 millimeter cable in the pack, which the other two didn't. Uh, so cheers guys, that was helpful uh, because you know not everyone just has spare 3.5 millimeter cables lying around. I mean, you could obviously order one, but if you wanna just get it out of the pack and start jamming straight away, the Donna gets a bonus point here because it had one in the pack included. Well, you know what they often say, the person with the most things is often the happiest. And here, the Vox has the most things out of all the contenders, with the Black Star also having plenty of things, and Donna having some things, but not as many things. Ta-da! The usability category, and this is something that may or may not be important to you. Um, with both the Vox and the Black Star, I actually found them really tricky to kind of figure out. Uh, with most music tech that I order or I review, I just like to get out of the box, 
test it, mess around, figure out all the settings. This was the first time I can remember in living memory where I genuinely had to consult the manual in detail to figure out all the settings for both of those two. So there's a variety of kind of different secret settings, I guess you could say, combinations of button presses you need. And it's because they're small, I guess they can't put hundreds of dials all over it. If they want to pack in as many features as they have, they're going to have to be clever about it. But there's certain features that you just wouldn't know unless you consulted the manual in detail because it's combinations of different buttons and dials. Um, the Vox, things that uh, I liked, things I didn't like, things I liked, um, the fact it's got a rotating jack on it is really nice. Allows you to change the angle on in the on it when it's plugged into the base so you can see the settings without having to crank your neck or ow, <laughs> all the way uh, around to see it. That was a handy feature. And in general, it was fine. Just things that annoyed me. Uh, firstly, the light color of changing the channels. For some reason, the high gain is green and the low gain is red, which I don't know, this might not annoy you, but that really annoyed me. I mean, red to me is like the more aggressive color. That should be the high gain setting. And I was backed up by the black star when I checked that because that is the right way around in my opinion. The green is the classic tone, the cleaner tone, and the red is the overdrive setting. So yeah, I don't know Vox, I don't know what you were thinking there, but that was a bit weird in my opinion. Uh, other things that were slightly annoying in terms of the usability was changing the tempo of the rhythm track. It was like cracking a safe basically. You could one minute be on a kind of 60 BPM chilled groove, touch the dial ever so slightly and suddenly you're in 170 BPM drum and bass or something. So trying to find the right tempo was very tricky. Uh, and on the black star, uh, just to compare that, you have you press the tempo button uh, twice depending on what rhythm uh, what rhythm tempo you want, and that's much easier to set. You know, quick tap for a very quick rhythm, or just a slower tap to get a slower rhythm. It's much easier to set a kind of. Although on neither of them you can set an exact BPM, you can get much closer on the Black Star than on the Vox with the dial. For the Black Star, I mean, again, similar with the kind of secret settings, as I said before. Uh, one thing that wasn't even in the manual, uh, for ages to get off the rhythm tracks, I thought you had to cycle through them all, which is very annoying to turn it off. But actually, if you turn, if you hold the power button and the rhythm button at the same time, that turns it off, but that wasn't even in the manual. So again, lots of secret settings can be annoying. Depends how much time you've got to figure those things out. So the Donner kind of comes in on top, I guess, in terms of usability because it is so simple. It just doesn't have the variety of settings of the other two. So you've just got the simple effects on and off switch on the side, easy to find, easy to kind of understand what it does. Three dials uh, and that's it really. And then the aux in and the battery charging port, that's all you've got on there. So simple to use, uh, kind of, gets a markdown usability because unlike the other two, it doesn't have the rotating jack on the back. It is just a fixed jack that you get. So you will have to crink your neck around at an angle or unplug it to change the settings or turn the bass over. So it's slightly more annoying than being able to turn the headphone amp to see it. Although I have heard from people that have owned these machines for a few years, that having that adjustable uh, rotating jack on the Vox and Blackstar is a vulnerability point in terms of breaking eventually. Um, but you know, I, I haven't had any problems so far, so I can't confirm or deny that rumor. Steve Jobs once said, if a user is having a problem, it's our problem. Well, Steve, look away now because I had a few problems right here, I'll tell you. And the final category in this ultimate showdown of bass headphone amplifiers is the battery. The Vox and the Blackstar both come with changeable batteries, disposable batteries. Um, I have been playing these, as I said, for a long, long time now. I'd say I've put at least 10 hours on each of those machines and they still are going strong with the batteries that came supplied. They both came with batteries in the pack which, and uh, I've not had to change those yet. The they do say that it's between 11 and 17 hours you get from the batteries. 
dependent on how often you use those rhythm tracks and how often you change and use more distortion and effects. Uh, the Donna, you don't get as much life out the battery is probably about seven hours and it has just run out of battery on me. However, it's rechargeable and that kind of gets it a bonus point because although the battery lasts longer on the other two, being able to just plug the Donna in and charge it is much more convenient than having to go to the store and get some more batteries. Because we're trying to reduce waste and all that, I'm gonna give Donna a bonus point in the battery category over the other two for the rechargeable battery, which I think is a nice feature. Power is the ultimate aphrodisiac, and despite all being quite small, these three really do have quite a lot of power. So before we get on to the final result, totted up total and the overall winner of the best bass headphone amplifier, I just want to take a minute to say if you want more information on any of these three headphone amplifiers, I'm going to do individual videos going into more depth on each one so you really know which one is the one for you. And on that, I will record the different tones and rhythms and things like that and put them all into those individual videos so you really do get an in-depth um, review of each one. So I'll leave links to those somewhere on screen here and in the description as well so you have that. And also, this is a new channel, I hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, please do consider subscribing uh, if, you, if you want more kind of product reviews, honest reviews, owner's reviews. Uh, I want to try and keep things simple and uh, kind of affordable equipment as well for people that are on a budget or just you know making music on the side at home. Uh, and I'm going, because it's a new channel, I'm going to do a bit of a giveaway and a bit of a motivation to myself to try and get the uh, channel going. If this video gets to 10,000 views, I will give away one of these headphone amplifiers to someone that comments below with the name of the amplifier that you would most like to own. So please do comment below after this video or just in general, which one you think would be the one for you. And if this video gets to 10,000 views, I will give one away. Right, so without further ado, uh, that's enough crap. Let's get on to the final result. Da, 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 da. So for me, the winner by one point overall, it was very close, but it is the Blackstar Flybase 2. And for me, it just pipped it in that variety of tone category, the ability to shape different sounds. And uh, I play a lot of rock and I'm not a metal guitarist, but I play heavier bass a lot of the time. And for me, having the distortion tones and the variety of tones was the thing that clinched it. I know for a lot of you out there, bass purists or people that play more funk and that kind of style of bass, you're gonna cringe at the fact of even putting overdrive or heavy overdrive on a bass guitar, sacrilege. So for you, the Vox has amazing tone, clean tone, probably wins outright as the kind of best clean tone of, of the three. And the, the yeah, just maybe that's why, as I said earlier, they didn't feel the need to put loads of settings in there, just keep it simple. So depending on the kind of style you're going for, it really is very close between those two. And the Black Star only just wins just because that extra variety of tone and those distorted sounds that I liked. Unfortunately, the Donna does come last, but don't rule it out completely. If you really are looking for something cheap and you don't really care about the variety and quality of the tone, you just want to play a bit of bass through some headphones, then it is fine. On the clean setting, it will do a job. Just be prepared. The quality isn't as great. And I would say if you can afford to save up the extra $25, then it is worth going for the other two. You won't regret it. 